So today's video is long overdue. We're going to be putting together the Formant Synthesizers power supply uh, using an original circuit board that is from Uva. Thank you very much, Uva. And um, yeah, it's been taking a little bit of a while because it took a little while to for all the components to turn up. Uh, some of them could have been bodged potentially with other uh, substitutes, but may as well do it well. Just a warning, there probably isn't going to be any sound coming from this in this video today. We're going to focus on the power supply. But anyway, I've been shooting this on and off for the last like month or so. Let's just, so let's just, let's jump straight in. Um, what is the plan? Well, I'm going to build the original Formant power supply. Formant, the Formant synthesizer has, has a couple of books that come with it. This is the first one and this covers the VCOs, the filters and stuff. So, um... Where are we at? Here's the power supply. So this is what we got at the power supply. There's three, basically three elements to the power supply in the magazine. Uh, there's this part, which um, this part, which takes 18 volts AC and sends out 15 volts DC. Uh, 18 volts AC. They're a separate winding, I think. Yeah, and uh, that sends out minus 15 volts. And then there's this one, which is from a 10 volt AC, uh, what they asked for, uh, to five volts. So that's, um, yeah, it's a completely over the top, I've got to be honest, for a modern kind of synth. It's what would have been used uh, back in the day, but uh, it's the truth is I tend to build with my heart and not my mind, which is a bit silly. You know, if I was building or doing anything with my mind, I'd probably shut up shop, shove everything on eBay, download Ableton, but I haven't. So we may as well go full hog and build the old power supply. Looking at other things, chatting about Foreman on videos and stuff, some people I have seen have actually decided to do completely the opposite to me. And that is um, get rid of this and say, oh, it's not efficient and all that crap, which is true. And put a modern one in. Uh, and yeah, I'm basically doing the opposite of that taking out a modern power supply, putting this one in, uh, because why not? Basically, this all started because a kind person by the name of Uva uh, offered to send this over. This is a power supply circuit board, an original formant power supply circuit board that um, Uva had no use for. Uh, I think they maybe had the original two of these, maybe they got two of these at the start and this never got built, not sure. But it's really cool. It's got the original blue and black Elector kind of silk screen that you can recognize from most Electors. And on the back, it's got the really nice, um, some sort of transparent stuff that's like makes the copper red. Really cool. Really nice. So this is uh, what we're going to build. Okay, here we go. We're all getting focused. For final adjustment of the keyboard, because this is just after the keyboard chapter, we'll look at the keyboard another time. It is necessary to use the synthesizer's own power supply to ensure accurate setting of the volt per octave characteristics of the keyboard, because the keyboard is in volt per octave, because the, vo the oscillators are in volt per octave. For this reason, the power supply circuit is now described. Three output voltages are required for the synthesizer, plus 15 volts, minus 15 volts, and plus five volts. These must all be stable and easily adjustable. And for this reason, all three suppliers are based on the tried and trusted 723 Precision Voltage Regulator into IC, integrated circuit. The circuit of the power supply unit is given in figure 11. It is noted that all three circuits are positive regulator circuits with an external power transistor to increase the output current. The minus 15 volt supply is obtained simply by linking the positive output of the circuit to ground. This does have the slight disadvantage that separate transformer windings are required. So yeah, uh, basically this is just an opposite to that. All I've done is they've wired the, uh, the ground uh, to positive and then you end up with minus 15. Uh, but the problem with that is you need two separate windings of uh, the transformer. Then we'll look at that in a moment. Each supply is equipped with foldback current limiting and can comfortably supply over 800 milliamps. Whoa, jeez. Which should be adequate for any possible extension of the synthesizer. When limiting occurs, uh, about 1.2 amps, the output voltage will fall and the current will fall back to the output. 500 milliamps with a short circuited output. Current limiting of any of the outputs is indicated by the extinction of the LED indicator connected across the, pr the output. A printed circuit board and component layout for the power supply unit are given in figure 12 and it should be noted that the output connections of T3 are different from those of T1 and T2, being arranged BE EC instead of CBE. Good quality components should be used in the construction. Yeah, so uh, they just are uh, saying because you did the output transport transistors, which are these completely massive, humongous things. Uh, it's just the they're just um, labeled differently. Look, CEB, uh, EBC, EBC. Oh, right. 
so um, flicking over there. So if you want to make your own, you just download this PDF and even when you print it out to scale, you can literally use that as a scan to kind of, you know, develop the, uh, the circuit board. Um, at the bottom is uh, all of the parts. Uh, I did start shooting this video uh, a, a little while ago actually. Uh, but I realized that I didn't have all of the parts. So here I am again, lost all the footage. Oh, and there's a little bit more writing. Power supply and the power transistors should be mounted on generous heat sinks. For example, finned heat sinks. Oh, I got these random, oh, I got these random ones. Not ideal, but whatever, what are you gonna do? The AC supplies to the stabilizers may be provided by a single transformer with multiple secondary windings or by a number of smaller transformers. In either case, the transformers should be generously rated by one amp, blah, blah, blah. Power supply connections for the voltage control modules will be taken from the power supply by separate wires. We're, we're looking at that a little bit differently. Once the power supply unit has been built, the output voltages can be set to their correct values. The minus 15 volts supply should be adjusted to within 1% when the plus and 15 and plus five could be within 3%. So that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, I struggled to find a single transformer with 10 volt AC and then two windings of 18 volt AC. So I've got one of these, which is nine volt AC. Hopefully that's all right. So we're using that for the nine volt. -er. And then we've got a double windings. So one winding here, one winding there. Mains input, 18 volts AC out on these two. These are the 723 Precision ICs. These are the rectifiers. They're slightly different to the described ones, but hopefully they should do about the same thing. Get in focus. Nope. The B40, C3700, bloody bloody blah. blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna be put building it into a wooden box that goes out of sight underneath the module, because it's a little bit small, by the way. These are the actual uh, sockets that turned up for it. Probably won't use those. Mains input, and then it's gonna have a four pin XLR output, so ground plus minus and five volts, four volt, that thing, and then that's gonna go out onto into the modular. So uh, today, we're gonna try and build this mother. So now here's a time lapse where I bash it together inside the case, which is right up here, it's sort of, spoiler, it's already made. <laughs> uh, by the way, just a heads up, it's made externally because it wouldn't actually fit in this, uh, in this case at all. There isn't actually any space. And even the uh, switched power supply that was in the case originally, which I did test, it wasn't, it wasn't actually working at all, even with a load on it, that wouldn't have fit in the end of this project in the actual box anyway because that switched power supply was sat here right behind this module it's the kov module which is the one that interfaces with the keyboard and yeah that's not here so we can't actually plug the keyboard in yet so we need to find one of the circuit boards or etch one of the circuit boards for the back of here so you know it's external what are you going to do So here's the power transistors, here's the transformers, here's of course the, the circuit board. The kettle lead uh, connects into here, and then we plug it in, and then we get the uh, 
the signal LEDs, they turn on quite happily. To adjust and fine tune the, power, the voltages, there's plus 15 volts, you would twist that preset, uh, minus 15 volts and five volts. Um, not gonna completely get them uh, finished that calibration until I've plugged in all of the modules because there's probably a bit of voltage drop, but they are currently giving the right voltages anyway. So it all works, all happy. And then after that, uh, that kind of sits out of sight, that connects via uh, this um, yeah four pin XLR and then that four pin XLR then connects to this on the back of the formant uh, there's going to be a clear uh, back on the uh, back of this formant so you can see through the back of it but I mean it's not that much to look at anyway <laughs> if you remember in the last video all of the powers were connected via this rather ropey kind of screw terminal what I've done is I've used this um, handy down from another synthesizer piece of strip board with some um, connectors on there just using this to connect all the power supply wires together uh, these cables were already connected to the back of all the modules like I said I did get some of the connectors for the back of these but I've decided not to bother because when you put these connectors on the back it actually protrudes from the back of this case and you know I don't want to build another case for this because it looks cool it looks nice and homemade so I'm going to stick with that because uh, a lot of this uh, synth has been modified to actually only be able to be played via the front patch cables it was it doesn't seem to be have been built or at one point it was modified so all of the internal uh, kind of connections didn't really work for instance uh, the kov this switch right here you flick it down to kov that means it listens to the uh, internal uh, bus uh, none of the things that you're plugging actually do much but then you flick it up to ecv that means external cv then you plug to control this module you plug in the ecv right there on from the front of the panel but the switch is actually connected both of them are actually connected to the ecv and it's the the case with all of it so uh, there's no point in worrying about the back of it so we're just worrying about the power now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get it all wired in and in a couple of days there will be like a proper video with loads of sounds and stuff and i'll be doing a live stream of it making noises and whatnot Ooh. There's a noise module with a random voltage that's giving random voltage. The LFOs are receiving power. All happy days. Look at that. ADSR. I wonder if we can trigger it. Hey, yeah. So we've got a flashing on the ADSR. Thank fudge. Oh, they're a bit. Oh, 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 they're a bit. They're a bit tight. But yeah, that one might not be working. That one's going to need a looking at. So yeah, the power supply is working. The next video on this is going to be, well, fixing up a couple of modules, just a journal of how it's going. And then hopefully we're going to finally get some sound coming out of this beautiful thing. Anyway, so this month is going to be quite a DIY synth centric month because I've managed to get hold of another couple of DIY synthesizers from this era and we'll be looking at them and I'm hopefully going to try and get them all up and running and working happily for the next uh, open day, which is at the end of February, like doing out of season open days once every month up until Easter and then open more regularly. But this, hopefully we'll have this one up and running and there's another one and an, another one. <laughs> so keep an eye out for the videos. Uh, yeah, because we're back. We're back and we're doing... We're doing things. Anyway, have a lovely time.